toys, quake toys. Okay, so I'm going to read the Good Night Baby Flurry Heart, but my friend in China sent me this and was like, this was a while ago, because sometimes shipping takes forever from China, and was like, uh, question. So when, the, oh my goodness, I'm kicking the camera and everything. I'm so sorry. So when they, they get like, direct from the factory a whole bunch of stuff and their seconds I'm sorry I have a weirdy nail going on thing and if I cut it anymore I'm going to bleed and I don't want to do that so they get like they order like 5,000 let me see if I can focus get this to focus they order like 5,000 things from China and they don't always know what it is it's like 5,000 things from Hasbro and, um, sorry, I have messages going on. It's like one of those kind of nights. Um, but they don't always know what it is. So my friend was like, is this a flying pig? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, that's the newest pony princess, Flurry Heart. And they were like, did it? not translate right did you say like they called it like snow love i was like no it's really and truly flurry heart they thought it was like oh snow love i was like no it's really flurry heart which i just thought is kind of funny but you see why they kind of thought it was a pig she's very cute she's very sparkly why do they thought it was a well, because uh, sometimes uh, he translates my English into Mandarin, and it translated it as, like, snow love. <laughs> Whoops. And she doesn't want to sit up. Let's okay, see if I can. so we're going to... The baby looks like a weirdy twin thingy that Pinkie Pie has. Oh, Mrs. Cake's twins? Oh yeah, she, my ladybug does not like babies because they cry and make lots of noise and it kind of freaks her out when they cry. Not that she doesn't ever cry, right? It's just babies cry all the time. So uh, that is, so she's going to be with the play set that is coming out. And, and again, my friend was like, I don't know what this flying pig is, but I'm going to include it with, with the stuff I'm sending you. And, and that's, <laughs> that's what we got. And I was like, oh, that's not a flying pig. That's that's the baby princess. Stay. So the book is Good Night Baby Flurry Heart. I'm going to have to probably change my settings yet again. So let me show you. Isn't that cute? I love the artwork on this. And then here's the background of the book. And it says, how do you get a baby alicorn to go to sleep? Look at, she has got... A rarity, a spike, a sun probably for Princess Celestia, and look, a little Twilight Sparkle, a little one of her aunt, and also a flurry heart like pillow. Isn't that cute? So we'll see how the whole story. I'm gonna goes. try to manage this book. Um, our setup is a little bit and unusual don't for worry, us. Don't we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going for sure. Um, oh, I'm not going to make crying noises. Don't worry about that. I, I won't cry like a baby. I know that my ladybug would be like, oh, what are you doing? Right? So uh, we're going to read this book. If you have the book, feel free to read along with us. If you don't have the book, well, you should get the book, right? If you like it, that way you can read along with us next time. Open so it up. This is a little bit. Um, it's time to say good night. But baby flurry heart is wide awake. And then that's about the author. And look, how cute is that? A spike and rarity together. Okay, I really like the art in here. Good night, baby. Flurry heart. Pulling the blanket with her mouth. So cute. She's got blankies too, huh? You never took a pacifier, but you do like blankies. Once upon a time, in the magical land of Equestria, two princesses stood high in a tower. Princess Cadence used her magic to lower the sun. Oh my goodness. Princess Celestia used her magic to lower the sun, while her sister, Princess Luna, used her magic to raise the moon. This let ponies across the land know it was time to sleep. The typeset's a little interesting here, as you can see. 
And once again, you're watching Quick Toys. I know that it's it's kind of a bigger book, so I'm gonna kind of go like this so you can see the images a little better because it is a little bit bigger and it's very shiny paper. So we'll try to do our best to manage the shiny paper and the words and all of that. So it, you can see some of the background ponies in the Crystal Empire. Kind of neat to see them. In the Crystal Empire, the Crystal Pony saw the night sky and thanked Luna. Every pony was ready to get some good rest. Well, almost every pony. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. What? The royal baby, Princess Flurryheart, was wide awake. In fact, Princess Cadence and Shining Armor's daughter was not interested in going to sleep at all. Shining Armor was at his wit's end. Telling soldiers what to do was his was way easier than telling his daughter to go to sleep. Just in case you ever wondered about <laughs> the celestial designs. Oh my goodness. What's in his mouth? A pacifier. <laughs> and look at the bunny. There's a little bunny. He tried. Whoops. We have stock pages. No, we don't. They're just really thick. And there's no page numbers, so it's a little hard to see. He tried her favorite stuffed animal. Who was a stuffed spike? He tried singing a lullaby, and apparently he's not a very good singer because the notes are all crooked. And she went <laughs> He even tried silly tricks, but nothing worked. Flory Hart just would not go to sleep. Uh, if you're going to do a rabbit on your back hook, the baby's probably going to giggle. Shining Armor had one last idea. Look what he has. He has a stuffed gummy. Oh my goodness, had one last idea. He would tell Flurry Heart a bedtime story. One that's exciting and daring and filled with adventure, he thought. He tucked Flurry Heart into her crib and started his story the way all good bedtime stories start. Once upon a time. There lived a brave and daring young unicorn who traveled all across Equestria in search of adventure. Though he battled timber wolves and cragodiles. I don't know what a cragodile is. I guess it looks like that. Look at all of his adventures. He craved even more excitement. One day. The unicorn was traveling through the mysterious Everfree Forest. I don't know how he's going to get that knife off his back hoof. <laughs> when he came across a giant beanstalk that grew high into the sky. Aha! said the unicorn. I bet there's a truly epic adventure at the top of this beanstalk. I'm going to climb it. There's the timber wolves. And so he did. <laughs> oh my. Look at that. When he reached the top, he found a castle far too big for a regular sized, regular sized pony. The unicorn watched as a giant pony peered at a window at Equestria far below. I think he's telling the King Somber story, kind of, right? Soon I will climb down my beanstalk and steal the land from all the little ponies. I will take their gems and force them to make me dinner, said the giant pony. The unicorn needed to save Equestria, but before he could attack, the giant sniffed the air and bellowed, um, sweetie, what are you doing? What was he doing? That's what it says. I don't think the giant bellowed that. Shining armor turned to see Princess Cadence in Flurry Heart's nursery. 
I'm telling our daughter an exciting bedtime story filled with adventure to get her to fall asleep, he announced proudly. Cadence looked down at their baby, who was staring wide-eyed at her father. I love you, sweetheart, but you don't know the first thing about a good bedtime story for a baby princess. <laughs> Look at his face. He is not happy. <laughs> you think you can do better? Shining Armor asked. I was Princess Twilight's fall sitter. I told your sister more bedtime stories than I can count. Step aside and let a pro show you how it's done. Flurry Heart's bedtime story should be sweet and delightful and musical. She tucked Flurry Heart into her crib and started her story the way all good bedtime stories start. Once upon a time, there was a young alicorn princess who lived near the magical Everfree Forest. The artwork is great. Every pony loved her because she had a beautiful singing voice and brought joy wherever she went. One day, she wandered deep into the forest and lost her way. Before she could get too scared, seven cute little dragons came out of the shadows and asked if she was okay. Look, they so did this just like it. You can see Doc and Sleepy. I don't know which one's sneezing. Let's turn the page. The princess explained. This one, that one's tired. Oh yeah that she needed to find her way back to her castle. The dragons were happy to help, but they asked if the princess would sing for them first. <laughs> and so she did. The dragons were so happy that she had taken the time to sing for them they gave her all the gems they were planning to eat for dinner. She said she couldn't possibly take them all. I'm sorry, she couldn't possibly take them. But the dragons, a pro, huh? You might want to take a look at your daughter, foal sitter extraordinaire. Caden stopped her story and turned to see what Shining Armor was talking about. Baby Flurry Heart wasn't in her crib. She had teleported across the bedroom and was sitting in the corner playing with her toys. You may have been good at telling Twilight bedtime stories, Shining Armor said, but our daughter felt your story was a little dull. Your story had timber wolves and cragodiles, Cadence retorted. It would have kept her up all night. That's no way to get her to go to sleep. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Shining armor sighed. Well, if my exciting story doesn't work and your sweet story doesn't work, how are we going to persuade Flurry Heart to go to sleep? Do you know what persuade means? How are we going to, like, convince her? Like, get her to go, right? Cadence had an idea. What if we try both? You mean, a delightful adventure? Shining Armor asked. Something exciting and musical, replied Cadence. They grinned at each other. Darling and sweet, they said at the same time. And so, Cadence and Shining Armor both tucked in, I'm sorry, tucked Flurry Heart in. And this time, they both began the story the way all good bedtime stories start. What does it say? Once upon a time.
a kite. Very good. A dashing and daring unicorn was traveling through the mystical and mysterious ever free forest in search of adventure when he was stopped by seven little dragons. Their friend, a beautiful alicorn princess, had been pony napped, that's like kidnapped, by a giant pony. He had heard her singing, locked her in a cage in his castle, and forced her to sing only for him. The unicorn agreed to help the dragons. They took him through the forest to a clearing where a giant beanstalk grew high into the sky. They told him he would have to climb it to find the princess. And so he did. The unicorn climbed until he reached the giant pony's castle. He sneaked inside and found the princess. She was singing a sad, sad song. He told her not to worry. He was there to rescue her. The princess was thrilled and told him that the giant kept the key to her cage on a chain around his neck. That night, the unicorn waited for the giant to fall asleep. Then he very carefully slipped the key off the giant's neck and used it to free the princess. They were about to escape when the giant woke up. Fee fi phony baloney, you took my key, you little pony. Don't worry, said the princess. I have an idea. We just need to, shh, honey, look. They got a red. Shining armor and cadence looked into the crib. Princess Flurry Heart was fast asleep. Aiden slowly covered Flurry Heart with a blanket. Shining Armor carefully arranged her favorite toys around her. They both quietly backed out of the bedroom and Shining Armor gently shut the door. Shining Armor turned to see Cadence looking at him. Well, she asked, well, what? We got Flurry Heart to go to sleep. But we didn't finish the story, Cadence said, smiling. What happened to the unicorn and the princess? Shining Armor grinned. Well, I think the princess was about to reveal her brilliant plan to save them both from the giant. Yes, agreed Cadence, and I think the unicorn was going to do something very brave to get them safely back down the beanstalk. Definitely, and I'm pretty sure they fell in love. Then what, asked Princess Cadence, how does the story end? The same way every good story ends, of course. They all lived Happily ever after. The end. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with Quake Toys and reading this book with us. Sorry, it's a very big book. I'm sure the uh, paperback will be a little bit easier to manage. This is pretty big. And it's surprisingly heavy for not that many pages. So what do you think of Baby Flurry Heart? I can't wait till the whole place that comes. This was a nice gift. Yeah? And she's got a little peg <laughs> on her bottom. So I guess you can set her maybe in her crib so that she doesn't tip over quite as easily because her wings are big. So cute. What do you think of her? Too cute? Great. Too cute or just cute enough? Cute enough. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing to Quick Toys. Give us a thumbs up if you get a chance. And we will be right back. We have tons of new Equestria girls.
the minis. And we've got to scan them into our game, too. Not ton. We have, like, four. Well, we have a lot. And then we got to scan them all in. Thanks, guys, so much for watching and subscribing to Quake Toys. And we'll see you in a minute. Bye!